Spider-Man stole the show for this week's box office. I'm Rosemarie Miller here with Marissa Delato, an entertainment reporter here at Forbes, and we are going to tell you all about it. So, Marissa, Spider-Man had an amazing opening weekend. Could you tell us about it? Really did. It opened to... Uh, 120 million beating expectations and becoming the third largest uh, Spider-Man opening of all time. Also the second biggest movie of the year, or excuse me, the second biggest opening of this year domestically already, just behind Super Mario's movie. So it's very exciting, um, really hit with a big splash and just shows um, the excitement for this, you know, this beloved franchise. So do you think Spider-Man is actually going to have legs or was all the hype just this past weekend? No, I think this is going to continue in the fact that it beat expectations and even comparing it to the way uh, the first Spider-Verse movie came out, you know, that opened to just 35 million and ended up becoming a huge hit uh, just through word of mouth, through fans, you know, sharing with one another, you have to check this out through reviews and whatnot. Um, and so the fact that this opened to such, uh, you know, had a completely different opening than that movie just shows the excitement for it. And again, surpassing um, industry expectations for its opening, it's gonna continue into next week as well. It is. Well, we didn't quite see that happen with The Little Mermaid, if I'm not mistaken. It's down about, what, 58%? since opening just weekend. Just about, yes, from mm -hmm. last week to this week. But you know, there is an expected drop-off for every single, you know, Spider-Man will have a drop-off next week. I mean, that's that's the way things work uh, in this industry. Um, yeah, it's definitely gotta be, um, you know, it's a slight hit for Disney. You know, they came in below expectations with this opening and then to have Spider-Verse the next weekend come in uh, beating expectations and also, be, you know, replacing them at number one not having a you know a consistent number one through the weeks and just like a one week wonder so to speak uh definitely is a little bit of um it's not great for them but it definitely still like i i mentioned to you last week i think this is really going to be up to the kids and you know how this movie goes forward with its legacy well, the thing with The Little Mermaid is it's about two hours long, and I'm not sure a lot of people are going to keep going back. We're not going to see many repeats with a two hour long movie. No, I agree. This movie is about, it's for, like I said, the newbies, the kids who are very excited to see it, and for people, adults our age, it's how does it match up to the first one? How does it compare? And one bright side for this movie is that it did surpass the box office gross of the original 1989 cartoon in just one week. That was roughly, you know, 210, 211 million dollars. So not not a huge goal to surpass. Um, and obviously 1989 cartoon gross, very different from a huge Disney blockbuster today. Uh, but that did happen this week. It is officially bigger than the OG Little Mermaid. So how do you think streaming services actually impact how much people repeat a movie? I think that definitely has an impact. You know, there are, I'm not a huge movie goer myself. I'm definitely a more casual viewer. Some people like me are just going to wait it out in the beginning. Like, you know, do I want to see this movie in theaters? I don't know. Um, because I know, you know, there's no longer that, you know, just a few years ago, you had to wait a few months. You know, now it's just going to be a few weeks until... Every movie that's in theaters right now will be available to stream from my couch. And if you are somewhat <laughs> lazy, that's very enticing. Um, and because people are genu generally already subscribers to, you know, Disney Plus is is one of, if not, uh, I believe it's the second largest streaming service subscriber base wise. Um, yeah, I have Disney Plus. I already paid for it. So <laughs> maybe I'm not going to go see it. Um, but What's great is for those who do, like I said, especially for little kids where mom played Little Mermaid again, 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 like you saw with Encanto, like you saw with all these beloved newer hits, they're just going to have that in their house to just be able to be like, okay, we don't have to, you know, run back to the VHS store like we mm -hmm. had to. And realistically, how is Disney doing this year? I mean, Spider-Man isn't is Spider-Man isn't run by Disney, right? They, they're they run by Sony, if I'm not mistaken. So Disney isn't yes. seeing the money, although Disney is over like their merchandise, things like that for Spider-Man, correct? Yes, Disney did have actually the number three hit this weekend as well with the Boogeyman 
open to a small 12.3 million domestically. Um, but, you know, obviously the winner of this year, so to speak, at least, uh, you know, in my quick tally is going to be uh, NBC Universal, which had Super Mario Bros and was, you know, had one of the biggest openings and number one movie weekend after weekend after weekend until very recently. Um, so that's what they're going to be competing for, something like that that's going to be a week after week success. So what do you think it means that these animated movies appear to be doing so well? I mean, it speaks to the nostalgia in what adults are wanting to see. I mean, this is a generation that, you know, millennials, even Gen Xers grew up beloved, like loving cartoons and the fact that they do um, have such a wide appeal is definitely great. I mean, these are also, you have to think movies that were def made during the pandemic and, you know, a time when actors necessarily couldn't be on set in 2020, you know, the production time is wide for all these films. So um, the fact that cartoon movies are doing so well right now, you have to look three years back, where were we in lockdown? And so that definitely has some play in it as to why so many are coming out right now because in-person movies that you couldn't just record a voice over Zoom, you couldn't be designing on your computer remotely, you know, production on those were delayed. And, you know, that also showed studios, like, what if there is another lockdown? You know, they're gonna, they're gonna prioritize these types of films. Um, also, they're fun and it's the summer and cartoon movies aren't that serious. And <laughs> like I said, it's the summer, we don't wanna think right now, it's like, just vibes, just vibes. Give me Spider-Man. Give me Mario. Give me the mermaid. Let's go. Let's just eat some popcorn and chill. You are absolutely right. Life is too serious. We're not trying to see yeah. a serious movie. <laughs> nope. That's for the winter. That's for Oscar season. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll think then. Right now, I'm just having fun. And that's what moviegoers <laughs> are expecting. Well, Marissa, so what, what's next? What's coming up this weekend that people should be on the lookout for? We are seeing a, another ad to the Transformers franchise. Rise of the Beast will be coming to theaters Friday, and that's going to be the one to watch, the one to see how it competes with, um, you know, all the movies we just talked about and to see, you know, will it, will it come in number one? Will it, you know, will it, it's going to be very interesting. All these mm -hmm. summer franchises, this is the big time for them. So it's just going to be another addition to the crew. Transformers, that's something I may actually go see. I remember the first Transformers way back when with right. Megan. Which Megan was it? Fox. It was Megan Fox. Right? Megan Fox. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, Marissa. Thank you for having me. See you next week. Absolutely.